Hey guys, Josh here, and after over a year in early access, the full 1.0 release of Coral Island is finally available for Steam, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S. I played this game a lot in the beginning of early access, but when I knew that the save files wouldn't be carrying over to the full game, I stopped, and now I'm back into it, just like many of you. Stairway Games gave me access to this new build of the game about a week ago. I just finished my first year, it took me about 30 hours, and I'd like to give you my first thoughts on this version of the game and how it compares with the last time I played. For this, I went back to the review I made of the early access when it launched, I took note of all of the issues and things I had to say at that time, and today I will address the most noticeable changes. If you have not watched my original review, I recommend you do so if you want an idea of what the game was like a year ago, but if not, you'll be able to enjoy this video on its own as well. Let's start, and the first issue I had with the early access was how there were not a lot of options when creating your character, and that every wand would end up looking the same. There were four different styles for most features, like four eyes, four noses, and so on, and they all looked pretty similar, but there are now nine styles for each, making it a lot easier to create unique characters. They removed the option to change your jaw, and I wasn't sure why at first, but they added facial hair, which I guess would make it more complicated to edit the jaw, so I think that was a fair trade-off. There's also a wider selection of haircuts, and my favorite part is that you can skip the intro cutscenes and disable the tutorials, so if you've played a ton in early access already, that makes it faster to get right back into the game. Next, let's talk about the story. When I first played, there was only one year of storyline, and new quests got added along the way during early access. Now, some of it is complete, and some is not. The story is mostly divided into two major quest lines, one leading you underwater to clean the ocean, and the other one in the mines to save the giants. The one about cleaning the ocean you can finish, but once you think you're about to finish the one in the mines, you get a new objective that says work in progress, and you can't finish that quest. That was completely fine in early access, but since the game is now being advertised as a full release, I feel like someone who buys the game now and never updates it should be able to finish every single quest that they start, and every piece of content that seems to be in the game should be fully accessible, and unfortunately, that is not the case. Similarly, there is a merfolk kingdom, you will be able to eventually romance the merfolk, there will be a whole storyline with rebuilding their kingdom and everything, you'll even be able to do ocean farming and ranching, but all of that is planned for 2024. You can still meet the merfolk, live in their kingdom, and chat with them, but there's not too much to do there, and you can clearly tell that things are incomplete. As for the offerings, which are similar to Stardew Valley's bundles, where you have to bring specific items, these seem to be complete and achievable for the most part, but some of the rewards, like the access to the savannah, are not in the game yet and will be added next year. Stairway Games has published a roadmap for 2024, so this wasn't a complete surprise, and I will put it on the screen so you can see for yourself. While I think that things like the island visits or the multiplayer are fine things to add at a later date, a lot of what is listed here feels like it should have been part of the full release. I'm really enjoying the story and the game so far. The story took me about 25 hours or so to clean the ocean, and after that, there's just so much content, but it still does feel unfinished. On a brighter note, let's talk about the characters. There's now even more characters, and one thing that I love is how their outfits change with the seasons. For example, during summer, a lot of people will be wearing short sleeves, in winter, they'll be wearing coats and scarves, and not only do these changes appear on their 3D models, but also on their portrait when you talk with them, and it's just fun to see what everybody wears as the year goes on. Similarly, the town will be fully decorated for the holidays in winter, and I have spooky decor at the end of fall, so you can really feel the change between the seasons. Going back to the characters, however, there are a lot of them, which in a way is great because there's a huge selection of romanceable characters to choose from, a wide variety of personalities and styles, but also it can be a bit hard to keep track of who is who, and relationships feel like they go up quite slowly since there are so many people, and the town is pretty big, so it's not like in, let's say, Star of Seasons A Wonderful Life, where you just walk on one street and can talk to pretty much everyone in a few minutes. That's not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, just a difference that I wanted to point out, and if you want to max out all of your relationships, you will have some work to do. 
The great thing is relationships do not decay, so you don't have to worry about losing your progress if you don't talk to someone for a while. I also like that the map shows the opening hours of each shop and where everybody is, so you don't waste your time going somewhere just to find out that it's closed. It can take a while walking from one point to the other. I wish they could just make the running speed a tiny bit faster instead of having a dash option that I ended up using pretty much every two seconds for my whole playthrough, but the fast travels are now easier to unlock. You get them very early on, so that's what I use most of the time and it's been working well. I also noticed that they added quite a few cutscenes where I get to know the characters a little bit more, which is great and overall I like the cast of Coral Island. You can get married in the current version of the game, but in 2024 they will be adding dating mechanics, allowing you to hang out with your significant other similarly to how it works in My Time at Senrock. So personally, I will probably wait for that to be included before I get too much into the relationships, and the game right now lets you have two children, but they won't be able to grow up until 2024. A great time to talk with all of the characters at once is during festivals, except for New Year's Eve when none of them have dialogues for some reason. Other than that though, they usually have things to say, and the festivals are a lot of fun. There's about two per month right now, and you can see a sign for the next festival in front of the community center, which I found to be a nice detail. It makes you look forward to the festivals. And once the day comes, you will get a little pamphlet showing you where all of the activities are. Most festivals will have a shop and a few mini games where you can win rewards such as money, items, or even merit points, which are points used to purchase special items from the community center. My favorite festival was the Harvest Festival, where I had to bring six of my best items in different categories, like fruits, vegetables, artisan products, barn products, and coop products, and they were judged against the products of Bobby, a rival from another town. It was really fun to prepare for that festival, trying to get the best products as possible, and then seeing how the points were calculated by the judge. I didn't win, unfortunately, but I enjoyed it, and you can tell that the developers put a lot of effort into the festivals, making them fun and immersive. One of my favorite features of Coral Island is diving. Using the site, you can remove trash, you find these little orbs, which then go into these pillars, create a path of light, and you have to make sure that the path is clear of trash, and after that you'll gain access to more areas to clean. It's really fun and addictive, and definitely the thing I spent the most time on so far. One thing you couldn't do in early access, at least when I played, was upgrading the site, so sometimes removing the trash was pretty slow, but you can now upgrade it, making things more efficient and satisfying. Another activity is mining. So now all of the four mine shafts are accessible, which means you can collect the four different ores and upgrade your tools all the way. The mining itself is pretty much the same as in early access. I quite enjoy it. It's pretty standard. You just break the rocks until you find the hole, then you go deeper until you reach level 40 and unlock the next mine shaft with more valuable ores. The only thing is, the combat still feels unnecessary. They have changed the monsters, and the new monsters are really not as annoying as the previous ones. And another good thing is that you can now toggle the aggro on or off, so you can make it so monsters don't attack you until you attack them. However, you will have to engage in combat eventually, as some items are required for crafting and to complete certain offerings. The problem is, it's just not that fun. I think the main reason is that there's not a lot of feedback, so you don't really feel it when you hit an enemy, they don't get pushed back, there's not a lot of animations or anything like that, and similarly, when you get hit, you don't really notice it, and on top of that, you have so much health compared to the damage dealt by the monsters that it doesn't really matter. I do enjoy combat in farming games when it's done right, but I feel like in Coral Island, the combat is not contributing to the experience, you could remove it and not lose anything, and that's one thing I was hoping would be improved. At least you do have a setting to make monsters non-aggressive, so you can focus on mining, so that's a small win. Also, the amount of settings we have in this game is something I really appreciate. That was already there in Early Access, but one of the biggest things is you can change the speed of the game to fit your preferred playstyle, and you can now also change the time format to switch between the 24 or 12 hour clock, there is now full controller support, which works great, but I still feel like farming is easier with mouse and keyboard, as you can quickly select the tiles with your mouse. They also added a wide range of accessibility features, such as dyslexic font, the option to change the font and cursor sizes, three different colorblind modes, and more. Another thing that wasn't there when I played Early Access 
is the addition of pets. So there is a pretty good variety of animals that can be adopted. They even took the time to draw portraits for them, which I think is amazing. There is a pet race during the animal festival, but other than that, the pet doesn't do much. In fact, before getting a pet, I had to choose if I wanted to get the exterior pet house, which was a bit pricey, or the cheaper pet beds. And I went for the house as I wanted something nice for my dog. I put it right next to my house. It looks great, but it turns out my dog just stays inside the whole day. Usually he starts the day in front of the door, then he goes in the stairs or stays in the corner and he can't go outside. I can't give him treats or play with him. And I feel like the pets are another very incomplete feature of the game. While we're talking about animals, I get why they do this, so no one gets stuck in the barns, but the animals don't collide, they all just walk through each other, and that makes it hard sometimes trying to pet them or to collect their materials when they're overlapping. They also sometimes decide to just stand where you're supposed to put their food, and I had the same issue with Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life, so you just have to wait until they move or ring the bell to send them outside. There is one way to work around this, however, and that's the auto feeder. If you gather enough materials for the research, you can learn how to craft machines that will pet or feed your animals automatically, or even add-ons to your sprinklers that will add fertilizer, sow seeds, or even harvest your crops, allowing you to automate most of your work. Overall, there are just so many upgrades and things to unlock in Coral Island, and it feels very satisfying. Also, I would say that the pacing at which you progress is pretty good too, there are some games in which, for example, you unlock sprinklers so early and easily that you basically never need your watering can, but the pace at which you progress and automate in Coral Island feels just right. I would like to also quickly talk about some quality of life features. By default, crafting can take items from your chest if you don't have them in your backpack, which is very convenient. If you want to make sure that some items do not get used, the good thing is you can turn that setting off individually for each chest. The whole crafting and inventory management experience is pretty good. You can even sort items automatically and all of that. But one issue I have is with the transfer of items from a chest to your backpack. For some reason, a left click transfers right away an item from your bag to your chest. But from your chest to your bag, a left click just grabs it. So you then have to drag and drop it manually in your bag. It's the same thing with the right click, which transfers one item automatically to the chest, but the other way around, it just grabs it. You can actually do a quick transfer from the chest to the bag, but that's with the middle mouse button. I don't know if it's just me, something I don't understand, or something messed up with my controls, but I found it so annoying that the control scheme was different for each side of the inventory, and I kept pressing the wrong buttons. To better organize your stuff, you can also have sheds on your farm, and I absolutely love these as they not only look good, but you can decorate them however you would like and place any chest or machines inside. I spent some time on stream today moving some chests and stuff in it, but upon reloading my save file, everything got messed up. The items were still at their previous position visually, but to interact with them, I had to go back to the place I moved them to without actually seeing them. The only way that I found to fix it temporarily was to go into the decor mode, grab the invisible items and move them again, but that doesn't guarantee that the same issue won't happen again. And I actually did some testing and the problem was coming back every single time I reloaded my save file. Maybe I'm just unlucky, I don't know how common this bug is, most people have just started playing so they have not gotten to the sheds yet, but it wasn't the only bug I encountered. While decorating my farm with the architect desk, which I absolutely love, one of my favorite things with this game, it stops the time and lets you move anything on your farm for a bit of money and it's very convenient. But oftentimes when I exited that mode, the snow that was on the ground because I was in winter would suddenly disappear. It would come back the next day, but still, this kind of broke the immersion. Lastly on that topic, this is not really a bug, just maybe an oversight. But in winter, there is snow on the floor of the greenhouse when you see it from the outside, which doesn't make too much sense. Overall though, I think that winter does look a lot better than in early access. I remember everything was way too white and it didn't look natural. It's still not perfect, like I said, the snow inside the greenhouse, but it has been improved. Hopefully, these are all things that can be fixed in the future. And overall, I did not experience that many bugs. Another thing that's been improved is the decoration. There are now so many furniture pieces that you can use to decorate your farm inside and out. 
and they are pretty expensive, but if you like decorating, it really gives you something to work towards even after the story ends. Personally, this is my favorite part. I just finished the first year and the story, so I'm slowly getting started with the decorating. But the field is huge, you can place buildings anywhere you want, things are easy to move around, you can also change the style of most buildings, including your house. And I think that for anyone who likes decorating in a farming sim, this game should be worth trying. And I can't wait to see what everybody creates. To conclude, I know this video may have sounded kind of negative, and I feel bad because I really love Coral Island. It's an amazing game that does so many things so well, but with the content that's missing, it's just hard to call this version of the game a full release. The game has been improved in almost every way since last year, and the save files will carry over whenever these 2024 updates come. I think the game is worth playing and worth its price, but if you're looking for the complete Coral Island experience from start to finish, then I would recommend maybe waiting another year, as after playing for a while, you start noticing the missing content. I think they were maybe eager to release it on consoles and call it a full release, but if I didn't know and I had to guess on the status of the game, I would have said it was just a pretty major update of the early access. So are you playing Coral Island or are you waiting? Let me know what you think of this current version of the game. Leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. I will definitely revisit this game and make a full in-depth review once it's been updated. And I'll see you all in the next video.